Singapore is trying to keep its wild boar population down. It's modifying their habitats and taking action against those who feed them. These methods are paying off in its largest nature reserve, but lack of data and surveillance are hampering efforts elsewhere, even as conflicts with humans are on the rise. Melissa Go and Yo Kai Ting find out more in today's SG Pulse. This was caught on a camera trap. One of 30 deployed to monitor the teeming wildlife in the central catchment nature reserve. The images suggest over 200 wild boars pig out on seeds, fruits and young plants in its thick forests. But their numbers are dwindling. What we are doing right now is slowly removing the oil palms. They produce this cluster of fruits um, that have, are rich in oils. Once they are full, um, you know, they don't have to look for food anymore, so they then go on to meat. <laughs> so uh, we would like them to actually uh, spend more time foraging. Elsewhere on the island, though, researchers believe the boar population is growing. Groups of 20 or more have been spotted closer to urban areas in Pongol, Bukit Batok and Tuas, where they venture out for human sources of food. Blood samples suggest some are related to the boars from the central catchment nature reserve. And they are also able to move across heavily urbanised jungles like this HDB estate I'm in. But without camera surveillance, tracking actual numbers and movement patterns is an uphill task. Researcher Joshua Koh tagged 40 wild boars over four years, but most of the devices fell off. So the first tag I used was this tag that's commonly used for farm pigs, and I'll put them on each year of the pig. That did not go so well because I think the tags that are designed for farm pigs are probably not as robust. For my second round of tagging, I actually bought commercially available ear studs, but again, is isn't strong enough. Uh, to withstand the rough nature of the pigs. So pigs, unlike us humans, they, they have a cone head. They don't really have a neck per se. So the collars can slip off very easily. Other methods like collecting samples of hair or body fluids for DNA tagging also didn't work out. CNA understands this can cost thousands of dollars each. But without accurate data, it's hard to pin down their impact on the environment and urban population, even as problems like wild boar attacks emerge. This makes it tough to nip any problems in the bud. You need to know how many pigs there are to begin with. All this data can be fed into a population dynamics model. Give very good information like how would the population grow or shrink. Parameters include things like birth rates, um, death rates, um, sex ratios, you know, average litter size, earliest age of reproduction. Already, data on where and when they head out to urban areas collected by researchers is leading to more effective enforcement checks at hotspots for illegal feeding. We notice that the number of feeders have now uh, decreased or we don't see them at all. And that's great because uh, it does two things, you know. One is that um, it prevents the wild boar from associating with humans. And number two is that um, it will gradually force the, the wild boars to actually search forage for natural food. Um, and that will, will reduce its uh, population through time. Uh. Experts say developing more and better ways to gather data on these creatures will help with managing their numbers. SG Pulse on the wild boar population continues tomorrow night. We'll look at how it can affect the environment and human health.